Right now we're in Centennial Park, which is uh, really close to downtown Duncan within walking distance. Uh, Duncan is a small community of about 5,000 people, but it is kind of the urban center for the Cowichan Valley. My name is Michelle Jeannot and I'm the manager of planning for the city of Duncan and I've been working here on and off for the past 10 years. Our official community plan focuses a lot on smart growth principles yeah. um, and just accommodating all, all needs, uh, all mobility needs um, and developing complete streets and so we hope to achieve that wherever we can. Um, one of the areas where there's redevelopment and densification happening is in this downtown core. Um, and so, yeah, making it as pedestrian and, and cycling friendly as possible. Like from where that truck is to Government Street is um, one of the only areas where we currently have dedicated cycle lanes also up on Government Street. I mean, something else that we try to do with any development application that comes forward is, is looking at the facilities uh, directly adjacent to that and what we can plan for, what we can approve immediately with the development, what the impacts of the development will be. Um, so looking um, to expand sidewalks, um, wherever possible, sometimes through road dedications, um, and plan for future infrastructure as well. Sometimes we've done some kind of temporary sidewalk infrastructure that will allow us to, in the future, build a bike lane on that street. So one example is on Jubilee Street. For a portion near the, the curb of the sidewalk, we, instead of um, paving it with concrete, um, we did a kind of temporary measure where we have a curb and then we have a section of artificial turf that can be removed later on when we're able to build the bike lane. Uh, this would be the future curb edge. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then so that's yeah. So we would we would we something? would narrow. Yeah, utilities would have to be undergrounded. Um, we also just recently uh, adopted a master parks plan for Rotary and McAdam parks over on the east side of the highway. Mm -hmm. um, and so a major focus of that was uh, the circulation throughout the park. There's um, the dike trail, that's a major trail, um, but it's also a lot of the park users appreciate the off-leash dog park area. So. Um, so looking at how to accommodate everybody's needs within those parks. We've made improvements to signalized intersections as well and added um, flashers at the crosswalks wherever possible. Um, and we also have uh, the city square that has um, a lot of flexibility for different events and uses. So right now we're just off of Canada Avenue and, and through that way is the city square where Saturdays we have the farmer's market. So um, at all of the entrances to the square we have the ability to install these um, temporary bollards uh, whenever they're needed and so um, we work with the Downtown Business Improvement Association. They actually manage this, the square. Yeah, so this is one of the challenges uh, we face throughout the community where we have um, infrastructure like these hydro poles right in the sidewalk. One example um, that I can show you where we had to in incorporate the railway was our friendship trail that goes up Canada Avenue um, because we weren't able to, to develop a safe crossing where the railway is without undergoing other major improvements. Uh, so we're on the Friendship Trail and this is one spot um, where you actually have to cross the road, go down the sidewalk, and then cross back over at that crosswalk down there to get back on the Friendship Trail uh, because of the railway being here. Another challenge that I didn't mention um, that I'm sure other small, some other small communities in BC have is we do have 
a couple of areas where there's um, a, a big change in the grade between uh, different streets. So we have a couple of sets of stairs um, that have a, a lot of different opinions from the public and have like posed some challenges. <laughs> So this is actually where I mentioned uh, the road narrows down quite a bit. So we had to transition from a dedicated cycling lane to Sharrows. Matt Blakely, I'm the planner with the City of Duncan. The main things that I think about when I'm thinking about like active transportation, and especially in small towns, is how to get people to stay out of their vehicles mm -hmm. and kind of creating those like this space here, like creating those destinations and having almost like a destination walk without it necessarily being a structured one, but just having little spaces outside of the businesses kind of draw people in. We definitely have all types of users, whether it's uh, recreational or um, if that's their choice as a main mode of travel. And you know, we also are aware that, that some people don't have a vehicle, um, not by choice. Um, they're not able to afford a vehicle, so we're really trying to accommodate everybody.